Our next speaker is Chloe Johnson from Minnesota presenting on her local chapter of the global nonprofit Bye Bye Plastic and her experience within the global family of this organization. Are there any questions before we get started? All right, seeing none, Chloe, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, can everyone see and hear me all right? Yes, all right. Awesome. So I'm super thrilled to be able to be here with you today. Um, I, my name is Chloe Johnson, as, um, as presented, and I will be speaking on a local organization that I run, uh, which is a local chapter of a larger nonprofit called Bye Bye Plastic Bags. So Bye Bye Plastic Bags was originally founded in 2013 in Bali, Indonesia. And we have over 50 global teams and global chapters. Um, and one of them happens to be in Minnesota. So um, without further ado, I'm just gonna go right ahead and, and get started with introducing kind of what we do, what it is. Um, so Bye Bye Plastic Bags is a global nonprofit um, and it was founded by two sisters, Malati and Isabel. And they were only 10, 12 years old when they first started this organization. So um, they really wanted to make a significant impact in their lives and um, within their community as well. And um, they had really, they saw a really big pressing issue within Bali's uh, beaches and with all the single use plastic that was piling up around their community. And they saw that this was a human health problem. This was a call to action for youth so they uh, really started to get their friends, get their parents. Uh, we mentioned that parents are leaders, so they of course needed their support from um, their uh, family as well. And um, they eventually in 2018 banned plastic bags in Bali. So that's pretty significant for um, young people. And I think that is very much worth celebrating. And across the globe, we've had local chapters pop up. There's about seven right now active in the United States. And Bye Bye Plastic Bags Minnesota was actually started um, in the pandemic. And I had followed the story of Malati and Isabel for a while. And I was, of course, very um, connected with uh, the environment, very passionate about it. Um, I was definitely seeing the problem of single use plastic, especially in schools and um, within my community. And I wanted to see, um, hey, is there, is there some local research that I can do? Is there something that I can really invest in to um, bring about a, a deeper sense of activism within my own life, but then also make some impact around my community as well? So um, this pandemic born local chapter was um, definitely a, a very challenging one to start. And um, I had, again, gained some support from my peers and my friends. And I said, hey, let's, let's do something together. So I, I um, grabbed some, some, of my, some of my friends and peers. And then we um, really just started to tackle this, this local organization in Minnesota. And um, originally, the, the process with starting this organization was a lot of research. It's a lot of um, cold calling, you know, those, those restaurants managers saying, hey, do you have two minutes to just speak about your plastic bag use or, um, you know, really understand like what's going on in schools um, and what's, um, what's really taking, taking precedent within the future of um, our youth and um, what we need to do to move forward um, as a community and what, what Minnesota needs with our um, sustainability. So I think uh, really just after a lot of local research and um, getting a interview done with the headquarters in Bali, uh, that, was, that was really um, eye-opening, inspiring. And I think that it, it was really allowing me to rise to the challenge to say, um, yes, I am a young person. I am someone that's just um, coming from the pandemic and a lot of pressure and, um, you know, a lot of burn some weights, of course, on young people during the pandemic. But I, I wanted to be not only an impact within my community, but also come out stronger in the pandemic. And I know that 
um, we can do that. And we are very, very capable as young people. So um, that's kind of how we, we all started. And, um, you know, it's, it, it took some work. I was definitely um, super, super invested, a lot, lots of um, time consuming pieces um, within the the very beginning and um, a little story as well. So um, it was about October, I think October 26th is our official um, anniversary for Bioplastic Bags Minnesota. And originally, you know, we're, we're getting our logo done, you know, I'm at 10 p.m., you know, trying to like draw different designs for our logo. We're trying to, you know, figure out, okay, like, how are we going to get our funding? How are we going to, um, you know, really bring this to the surface? And there's, um, there was a grant competition by the National Society of High School Scholars for, and it was called Be More Fund. And um, it was worth $10,000 cash prize for um, a project, um, passion, passion project, nonprofit, um, you name it. So it was, it was more of like a um, competition between all of these um, different um, innovators and young people around the world that were trying to compete for this fund. So um, of course, you know, without having any experience and just really um, delving right into this um, opportunity, I just, I decided that this was something that um, allowed me to be a risk taker. And, and it was really um, a really wonderful experience because eventually, um, while speaking on behalf of Bye Bye Plastic Bags, I had made it to the final round. And although we didn't get the $10,000 cash prize, it was so incredibly empowering to have so many people support um, this organization that was so young and um, in so many um, loose pieces. And I think that it really allowed me to really step into this role of what I needed to do for my community and also um, who I needed to impact. So that was, that was pretty cool. And, um, you know, what we, what we do uh, is we do cleanups, we do uh, school presentations. Um, we, do a lot of local research, um, getting in touch with the grocery stores, especially with surveys with um, recycling take back centers. So if they have a um, plastic bag recycling center where uh, shoppers can come back and dispose of their plastic bags if they used one and where that all goes. Um, we also do um, some networking, of course, with businesses and really understanding um, how we can meet them where they're at and especially within the different um, demographics of certain communities and such, we want to make sure that we're also remaining uh, with empathy as well um, as we continue on this project and as we continue um, to really work within our community and navigate what, what our community needs. And I think that that was something that did not come uh, very easy at first. You know, that's um, something that I've learned within the past uh, year and a half of the, um, the start of the local organization. I think that it's so incredibly powerful. And I think the biggest thing that I can just say to, um, you know, really take away from that particular instance is just, um, you know, being, being that risk taker, taking that step and just understanding, um, you know, how to really branch out and, and gain um, some movement, you know, with, with other people and learning their stories. And um, I think just the, the ability to connect over something as, as pressing as our plastic pollution problem is, is really special. And it's something that we should also cherish as a community because there's so many different stories. There's so many different people um, that have some really great ideas and especially our young people, of course. And um, I think I just, I also want to um, explain our mission statement, just really go into um, kind of what, what that means. So we're, we're, uh, a, of course, a local organization that says no to plastic bags through activist friendly initiatives and local research and education. And we also want to emphasize um, the empowerment of youth as well, because this is, this is primarily youth driven. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I get some questions as to how, how we can ban plastic bags, you know, because that's the ultimatum. We want to make sure that we see as, as least um, of these plastic bags as possible and really to just um, completely decrease the amount of plastic pollution we have in Minnesota. And it's a process and it's definitely something where, you know, it goes back to um, connecting with the community and listening to their stories and remaining um, empathetical to, to what is going on within their lives because everyone has their different needs and everyone 
uh, within their community is in different spots. But I think that um, really just understanding the resources that you have, being resourceful, being um, agile with how to um, come across the um, challenges and, and bounce back from failures. I think that's, that's like the biggest thing with um, really navigating how to get rid of these plastic bags. And within our education, within uh, schools, we talk about um, really these, these um, four you know, key steps, of course, for, for young students. And you know, we all know the reduce, reuse, recycle. We've heard of that before, but um, you know, to, to really bring in the concept of eliminating some of use plastic bags, we say the first is refuse. Um, so if we can, um, and we have the resources to do so, we want to refuse plastic bags um, whenever we can. If we can't do that, then we reduce the amount of plastic bags that we use. And then if we still have to use plastic bags, we can reuse them as many times as possible. And then of course, um, if they are not able to uh, reuse for some reason, then we can find a local grocery store or a uh, recycling plant that allows plastic bag recycling to be recycled. So we kind of break it down into steps. Um, and I think in this way, it's pretty effective when we give um, talks. And I think that that example um, really shows that there is more complexity to just simply saying no plastic bags, you know, banning plastic bags, we can't use plastic because we've, we've relied on them. And it's a, um, it's a pinnacle of consumerism. And I think that that's very hard because we're really addressing within this activism, a um, systemic issue of how our society um, operates and how we kind of move about our daily lives and what we really need. So that's kind of how we explore the mission and um, really understand also what, what our community needs, of course. And as I mentioned, we have um, 50 global teams. So it's also very inspiring to um, come to these global meetings as we have them and, and really sit down virtually and say, okay, here's what I'm doing in my state or in my country. And seeing um, what Egypt is doing or seeing what, um, you know, Pennsylvania within the United States is doing or, um, you know, getting inspiration from um, Surabaya or something like that. It, it's been really um, empowering to see that the face of activism um, is just, it shines in different ways with around the world. And it's so very special to see that, um, you know, the, the different strategies and mitigation techniques for plastic bags and plastic pollution um, is different, it's diverse, but we can also use one another's ideas to really harness um, our own kind of innovations within our respective countries or states. And um, I think the, the biggest lessons learned with, with being a part of that global family is that um, there's so much relationship within this pressing issue. And while you might see on the media the intimidating um, plastic, the Pacific garbage patch, or you might see lots and lots of plastic bags being um, used every day or um, see lots of bottles being thrown in the trash. And it can be very frustrating, can be very daunting and say, um, you might say, well, what can I do? This is, this is really um, something that's, that seems out of my hands because it's so incredibly intimidating. Um, but of course, we can make those small steps. We can really get with our friends. Rule number one is you can't do it alone. So um, there's lots of different ways that you can um, just make those little lifestyle changes. And of course, um, small differences can accumulate to really, really big uh, progress and movement. And um, I remember reading somewhere that, um, and I was inspired by this, that we don't need um, a handful of people to do it perfectly. We need everyone to do it imperfectly. So we wanna make sure that we are putting in the effort, we're making that change, we're making that change, that click of awareness and, and saying that this is a pressing issue and this is something that I am capable of, even if we're not doing it um, right or 100% all the time, we can we can figure out what what is best for our lifestyle. And uh, I think the final thing that I want to um, bring about within this conversation and, and this topic is that 
um, above all, um, activism is love in action. So this is a, um, of course, the, the, the fundamental of this whole global nonprofit is just the love for our community, the love for being devoted to um, our respective state or our country. And we wanna see this um, organization move forward. We wanna see this mission be uh, all inclusive to everyone and everyone can participate in this and, and um, especially young people. And of course, that is one of the um, biggest parts of our mission is to really call upon young people to say, even though we might be only uh, a bit of the population globally, we are 100% of the future and um, we have so much to contribute and we shouldn't let um, the naysayers or the stubborn adults tell us that we just need to gain more experience or we need to wait till our voice is more um, matured or we have a little bit more um, we have a little bit more understanding you know we our voices are powerful so um, it's being open to that opposition as well you know to be able to say like um, you know we can we can do this, we can, uh, we are capable to just keep um, persisting and that that resilience with um, those people that might be hesitant to um, be on board with our mission. Um, but it's also just spreading this this impact for, for love for our community because we want to see this plastic pollution crisis um, really, really mitigate. Um, and we can do that with just the power of us young people. So. Um, bioplastic bags is definitely um, on this mission to do so. And um, within Minnesota, we are uh, going to continue to do lobbying. Um, our, our focus is, uh, again, on the cleanups and the, um, the presentations within schools. But um, we also love our volunteers that just simply tell us that we are making an impact. We are um, helping them understand what it means to make those lifestyle changes. So we all are definitely capable of helping this kind of, um, this kind of crisis. And um, I do believe in all of you and whatever your passion is and whatever um, your ideas or innovations take you, um, of course, again, never do it alone. You always need support. You always need your um, peers to really um, spark conversation and, um, different ideas to, to really forward your, your thinking, but also um, know that you have so many other young people around the world that are rooting for you and that really wanna see you shine within your communities because um, it's so incredibly powerful to be devoted to something as, as wonderful as this, um, as your respective passion. So um, I do wanna thank you and uh, bioplastic bags. Um, we have bioplastic bags. We want to also thank you. Thanks, Chloe. Um, we would like to open up the floor for any questions. Um, if you have a question, please uh, feel free to drop your question in the chat or you can come off mute. I have a question for Chloe. Great presentation, by the way. Thank you. All right, so um, first question that I'm seeing is that how can we all help? And I think that um, first I would go to the Buy Buy Plastic Bags um, website, just um, buyplasticbags.org, and um, they have um, different global teams. So if you see a team within your area, you can contact the team leader and um, really get in touch with them if you want to say, hey, I want to volunteer. I want to you know, really help out within um, your local organization. But um, even if you don't, I think the, the biggest thing right now is um, remembering that um, you can make those lifestyle changes and, um, you know, do, do the small habits, you know, like making that change to bring that reusable bag to the grocery store and uh, making sure that, you know, hey, if, if I don't really need to use this plastic bottle, um, I can, you know, use a reusable one at, at this party or at this event. You know, it's those small changes, it's those small sacrifices, but um, those 
small changes and sacrifices will accumulate into really good habits. And of course, as I said, um, it's okay to do it imperfectly, but if you just keep persisting and trying um, to make those lifestyle changes, um, that's gonna be absolutely beneficial and it's going to help more than you can imagine. Um, let's see, so. Um, try to see the chat. So um, what motivated you to start this project and bring your ideas to life? So I think um, really the motivation, um, I had spent you know, some time reflecting during the pandemic. I'm um, you know, just kind of a reflective person in nature, but I was really thinking to myself, like this, this is a problem that uh, you know, hasn't really been tackled in Minnesota yet. I mean, we have our uh, fees, we have like our five cent fees on plastic bags in Minnesota, but uh, we actually have a ban on banning plastic bags in Minnesota. So <laughs> we're working on um, trying to um, get rid of that within our state because um, if you look around other states um, and especially like the Northeast, but um, even I'm, I'm right now here in Colorado, they, they have um, in certain cities bans on plastic bags. So, um, you know, part of our local research, for example, is to um, compile different um, legislation from other states and different ideas of what other states have done and bring this to Minnesota legislation and say, okay, here's what other cities similar to Minnesota have done. Here's why it's successful. Here's what other people are saying about the success of this certain city, of this certain um, idea to you know, ban plastic bags or a certain type of plastic bags in this state. So it's really trying to bring evidence um, to, to the legislation. Um, but essentially, um, the motivation behind it was just all, um, you know, inspiration. I think inspiration is the biggest motivation. And I think that really being able to, um, you know, have other like-minded young people um, also to support me, I think that that was really what got me off the ground. So make sure you're um, talking to your friends and peers about, you know, what, what you can do and what ideas that you have. Um, let's see. So... Um, what can be an alternative for plastic bags? Reusable bags, um, of course, are, are awesome. Um, there's, there, some of them are made of polypropylene, but um, that, that's a certain um, type of plastic. But if you reuse it again and again, it can be re really effective. There's canvas bags, there's cotton bags. Um, and there's also a um, organization called Bag You, um, or it's a small business, but it's originally in, New York and they are um, making uh, plastic bags or like a plastic bag that it looks like a plastic bag but it's reusable and it's it's an awesome way to um, really make that change. So many people use plastic bags to throw their trash. If plastic bags were banned, what could be a substitute? Um, yeah, so that's that's really interesting. I think that's really cool. So um, again, it's you know, when we think about plastic bags, again, it's not like completely banning plastic bags altogether, but I had talked with a local small business called Galactic Pizza, and everything that they use for plastic is from corn or soy. And since those are heavily subsidized crops within the United States, um, we have a surplus of that. So that could be um, one alternative to um, just the like virgin plastic or plastic that is made just simply out of um, new materials um, and instead we could use other materials for a kind of plastic um, pseudo plastic if you will so but that's a really good question and uh, i'm trying to see if other things are in the chat um what have you learned about yourself by working with bioplastic bags i think um the power of my voice i think the power of um, my team, I think it's it's so incredibly inspiring to see the impact that you have and just to um, really cherish the external validation when you get that, um, when you get that cheering on or if, if you get that empowerment from other people and um, just to have others, um, other young people come up and say, you know, hey, you're really inspiring. Hey, your, your message means a lot or I'm going to, I'm going to make that change. It's so incredibly rewarding. So I think um, words and action hold so much power. Um, 
Let's see, how can we implement a more effective system to ensure that people are actually recycling and not littering? Yeah, so it's, um, again, it's holding, it's holding the uh, system accountable. So if we have, um, in this case, um, yeah, our school um, tries to implement recycling. Yeah, so um, again, it's really talking with the administration and making sure, hey, you know, like, if this is a problem that we're seeing, you know, let's, let's campaign to um, really get some education presentations out there. Or um, I think, you know, education is just one of the, the best ways, you know, and if people are unsure how to recycle, let's, you know, go back to the basics. Let's look at the roots. Let's go into the systems and um, say, you know, hey, what's, what's going on? What is the most, um, what is like, if it's a plastic bottle, like if that's the thing that's being least recycled, how can we make sure to um, really make sure that's, that's being changed and we can recycle that. And um, Chloe, we're going to go ahead and do one more question and then we can get into um, an intermission because we've been sitting here for most of the morning. So one more good question and then we can um, go into our break. Awesome. And then I'll just answer the questions in the chat as well. Um, let's see. Uh, what is the best way to create awareness about the situation crisis problem to convince other people who don't really care a lot about it um, and performing actions that prevent negative environmental? Okay, this is a really good question. And I feel like that's, it's one that um, definitely, uh, it's, it's one that a lot of activists, um, you know, try to wrestle with and, and just, it's, it's frustrating to see, you know, some, some of your friends or some of your peers say, this doesn't really matter. This, this is not really my thing, but I think, um, you know, just having, having some part of your message because this environmental, um, movement and the passion behind it is so incredibly vast and complex and there's something for everyone. So I think that just, you know, reiterating that, this is a relatable topic, you know, you, you use plastic. So automatically you are a consumer and you are a part of, you know, you can be a part of the problem or a part of the solution. So I think, you know, getting people to understand like you are innately a change maker, or you can just, you know, really sit by and um, watch this crisis continue. And I think that just really um, putting that kind of um, power within their hands is something that's really unique. And I think that a lot of people, they, they might say that they don't care because they don't understand their impact. So I think that really just um, reiterating that and emphasizing that to your friends, especially who don't um, really put an emphasis on it is probably one of the most effective things. And then I will um, continue to answer questions in the chat, but I love, I love all your questions and I really appreciate all your attentiveness and um, your uh, respect for for this presentation and I, I wish you a good rest of your day. I'm sure this um, leadership summit is definitely, um, have, we have lots planned, so.